Welcome to the channel guys, thanks for joining me today. Welcome back to all previous subscribers who remember me from back in 2017 and early 2018. And welcome to all new viewers of the channel. Here we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies. This new show that I've got for you is called Bad Jump Destination, and this will be more focused on the technological aspects of cryptocurrency. We'll be introducing new tokens, new projects, having a look at some of the interesting technology and how it fits in and what it does. And we've also got another show called Decentra Rant as well, which will be more of a rant. We'll be doing some um, AMAs, we'll be doing some interviews, we'll be meeting interesting people in the crypto space, so on and so forth. So two different shows for you guys. Hope you like them, hope you enjoy this video. This video is going to be about Truebit Protocol, so let's get started. Okay, so Truebit Protocol is a blockchain enhancement. It enables smart contracts to securely perform complex computations in standard programming language at reduced gas costs. At least that's the blurb on the website anyway. So effectively what it is, it's an oracle that performs complex computational tasks off of the main chain. So how does Truebit protocol actually work? Well, it takes the computational overhead, if you like, off of the main chain, does the computation off the main chain and then sends back the answer that's already been verified back to the main chain. This way, it allows for the data to be processed. So think of it this way. If you have a centralized system like many of the big data centers have at the moment, you've got a warehouse full of servers, they can process data very efficiently, but they have a single point of failure. They are a centralized system again. And when you try to move that centralization over onto the blockchain, you're decentralizing it, you have many, many more nodes that have to process the information and the computational overhead is just too much for it to be efficient. And that's why there's a solution that's needed for all of this computational overhead. And that's what Truebit provides. Now, the great thing about Truebit, another great thing about Truebit is that it is blockchain agnostic, meaning it can work with other blockchains. Sure, it's Ethereum focused. Their ERC20 token is launched on the Ethereum blockchain, but you can apply this to any other level one blockchain infrastructure project. It has a working product. Its mainnet has been live uh, since mid-April. It is interoperable with Ethereum and as I mentioned, other level one infrastructure. It enhances both the level one and level two scaling solutions that are available. So you could actually, even if you're a, a level two um, scaling solution, you could integrate Truebit protocol into your project to allow you to scale even further. And the other interesting thing this project has is what's called an interactive initial coin offering, which um, the white paper was actually co-authored by Vitalik Buterin of Ethereum, the founder of this project, Jason Teutsch, and another guy called Christopher Brown back in 2017. Now, there is a preview of the IICO platform available on the Truebit website. I'll link to it below so you can go and check it out. And you can also read the white paper as well, as I said, co-authored by a certain Vitalik Buterin. Okay, so let's look at the personnel behind this project. First of all, uh, Jason Teutsch, he's the founder. He is a mathematician, and I would call him a gigabrain crypto economist. He co-authored the IICO white paper with Vitalik and Christopher back in 2017. And he's a PhD um, and he's held postdoctorate positions at various uh, universities, including NUS and Penn State. So he's a very clever guy. His CV is impressive to say the least. Christian uh, Rietweisner, hope I pronounced that correct, Chris, sorry if I didn't. Um, he's the co-founder, he's also the team lead at Ethereum, and he's one of the creators of the Solidity programming language. He is a developer on this. Uh, he was a smart contract advisor at Slock, and he's been involved with Ethereum since very, very early on in the project. Um, and he uh, co-wrote the Truebit white paper with Jason. Fred Ersum is also involved. He is a billionaire co-founder of Coinbase and he's managing partner of Paradigm. Fred called Truebit a natural solution for scaling computation on Ethereum. And Fred is reputedly to have been an early investor in the project through his venture capital firm Polychain Capital. And finally, honorable mention goes to a guy called Sammy Michaela, who is the senior core developer. So let's look at the competitors that this project has. Now, I'm not sure 
any of them are actually direct competitors, to be honest. They're all trying to do something that's a little bit different. Now, the first one I want to uh, talk about is Golem. It's probably the one that's been around for the longest. It's focused on um, verification of data, but it focuses on the probabilistic verification rather than actual verification as Truebit does. iExec is another uh, decentralized marketplace for data. It's a, a, a off-chain computation and data on a cloud, essentially. Optimism. Uh, we've all heard about Optimism, how they hope to scale Ethereum using optimistic rollups. But again, they only really apply to the Ethereum blockchain. Their focus is their level two scaling solution for Ethereum. Arbitrum recently launched their mainnet. I believe Uniswap are building on Arbitrum now after they had a community vote to do so. Again, they are a level two scaling solution on Ethereum. Cartesi. Cartesi is probably the closest to Truebit in terms of what they're trying to do, but they use a different programming language, so it's not really um, exactly the same. Uh, Truebit uses WebAssembly. I can't remember what Cartesi uses, but it's, it, it, it's different. The projects are often compared together. They are quite similar, but uh, in my opinion, Truebit is uh, the original and has probably got the better development team behind it. No disrespect to Cartesi. And the other one I want to talk about is NAMI. Um, it's again another level two scaling solution specifically for Ethereum and they use what's called state pool technology. Okay, so who are Truebit partnered with? Now, the first partner they have is Matic, now called Polygon. Uh, Matic are a level two sidechain scaling solution for Ethereum. Again, this scaling comes up all the time because it is actually the biggest problem that blockchains will face in the future and Ethereum is facing it right now with the amount of users on it. It's struggling to actually process all the data. Polychain Capital, as I mentioned before, uh, they are Fred Ersom's uh, venture capital firm and they've been early investors in the project. So Ocean Protocol, uh, they've been involved with Truebit before. Their founders, Don Gosson, Trent McConaughey and Bruce Pond have previously supported the project at various stages through its incubation. LivePeer are another partner as well. They're a video streaming service. And again, um, Truebit's data handling allows the streaming to be efficiently done on the blockchain. And the final partner I want to mention is the Ethereum Foundation. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, do they actually have a partnership with the Ethereum Foundation? Well, the reason I included them here is because uh, when Truebit was uh, conceived and it was a, a new project, they were consulting regularly with the Ethereum Foundation and Vitalik himself on a regular basis. And if you uh, listen to any of the devs or any of the presentations about Truebit Protocol, you'll know that they work very, very closely together on the inception and creation of this project. Now, the use cases for this project, the first one is obviously secure computation for smart contracts beyond their native capacity. So what smart contracts can't handle at the moment, Truebit protocol will be able to handle. And we'll get to why that's so important in just a minute. Truebit can perform complex operations on the chain. It can check proof of work. It has a high throughput, so it can do tasks like bookkeeping, things that are very computer intensive. It can perform machine learning and federated learning. It can also provide solutions for insurance. And we've seen some decentralized insurance projects launching. Um, you know, Truebit goes beyond what they're able to offer. And it can also offer fraud proofs on Plasma. Uh, and when we're talking about fraud proofs, we're talking about things like uh, ZK rollups and things like that. Um, Truebit protocol can actually provide zero knowledge proofs as well as part of its uh, system of verification. Okay, so you might be wondering, well, why the hell does it have a token? Optimism doesn't have a token. Arbitrum doesn't have a token. These other level two solutions, they don't have tokens. Why does Truebit Protocol have a token? Specifically to allow operation on any underlying blockchain. If it didn't have a token, it, it wouldn't be able to do that. It also keeps the incentive for verifiers as well. So the Truebit Protocol holds their true tokens in much the same way as the Ethereum Foundation holds Ethereum. The models are very, very similar. So let's talk tokenomics. The token is TRUE, T-R-U, and it's only available on Uniswap and a handful of other centralized exchanges. It's not to be confused with the TRUE on Binance. That's a different project called TRUEFI. So if you're interested in buying this, Truebit protocol, don't do it on Binance, at least not yet. And I'm expecting it to be listed on larger exchanges in the future as the uh, 
a use case of this token becomes more widely understood and as more projects pick it up, it will no doubt be listing on larger exchanges. The token economics are deflationary, meaning over a period of time, this supply will reduce. And that's because in order to use the Truebit protocol, you have to utilize the True Token and you have to pay the verifiers to perform the tasks. Verifiers get paid in the True Token, so it actually has a use case. And some of those tokens are burnt. So over time, the whole supply, the total supply will actually reduce. Okay, so the mint function of this token means that you can actually go and mint tokens on the Truebit OS, but the price is in Ethereum, and at the moment it's more expensive than buying them off a exchange, decentralized exchange like Uniswap or a centralized exchange. Now the supply at the moment, and I mentioned the supply is variable, is a deflationary token over time, but again, it can increase when people mint new tokens off the operating system. But as they're used, they will be burnt by the uh, protoc protocol itself. Now, at the moment, there's about 280 million total supply. Uh, it has around 150 million market cap at the moment. The token price is around 50 cents, and it had an all-time high of $1.31, and an all-time low of about 9 cents when it was launched. And it must, I must state that this was stealth launched as well, so nobody actually knew what was going on. They didn't announce it, uh, they just launched it and let the price discover itself. Right, let's look at the strengths of this project in my opinion. Now the first one is it's post-quantum secure. So we don't need to worry about quantum computers coming along and making it uh, obsolete. The second thing is it's SEC compliant and the reason it is SEC compliant is the team have been very mindful about not incurring the wrath of the, of the American authorities in particular. So they didn't have an ICO, the project was stealth launched, the token actually has a use case much like Ethereum. It's also blockchain agnostic. Now, this is a big strength because it means that many level one infrastructure projects can adopt this protocol for their use. So it solves the biggest pain points in blockchain and that is scalability and fees as well. And as we've seen, Ethereum suffers from both problems and fees can be astronomical and also transactions can be very, very slow as well. So we really need that scaling solution. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that Truebit will be the only one, but as we go further into the future, Truebit is the one that's most likely to scale to a capacity beyond what the other level two scaling solutions can currently offer. It's also a tech focused project, meaning they're not really uh, relying on people to hype it up or pump it. They are very, very tech focused. They're focusing on delivering the project. The team is directly involved with Ethereum development. As I mentioned earlier, they have been consulting with the Ethereum Foundation. Vitalik himself has been involved at various stages and they um, have this continuous dialogue as well. And the other thing is it complements both level one and level two scaling solutions for Ethereum, for example. So it can be used with the main chain itself and it can also be used or adopted by the multitude of level two solutions. It's exhibited longevity since 2017. It's been around a while. It's not a flash in the pan. Now, we saw a lot of projects come and go in 2017 and they're no longer with us, but this one is. It has a deflationary token model, so investors over the longer term will be rewarded. So the economic incentive of this uh, protocol is based on adoption, and that's what I like. They're not resting on their laurels, hoping that people will buy it just out of marketing and hype. They're actually focused solely on projects adopting it and using it, and that's what will drive the price in the longer term. The tokens are actually required to use the protocol, so they actually have a use case. In simplistic terms, uh, price is linked to the Ethereum price. As I mentioned earlier, there is a mint price and that's in Ethereum. So the higher that Ethereum goes in price and US dollar value, the higher that true uh, price to mint will go as well. And it, it stands to reason that the higher the Ethereum price goes, the uh, Truebit protocol token price will follow. So Truebit was the first incentive-driven off-chain computation or IOC implementation scaling solution and is post-quantum secure, as I mentioned before. So basically, it was a first mover in the space. All the other ones came after the idea that Truebit had. Now, not everything's rosy in the garden. As you can imagine, there are always some weaknesses behind a project and some risks, and I'm gonna go through them for you just now. Now, the first one I think is a fairly big risk is the fact that they're not reliant on any marketing. Now, you could say, well, they're standing by the um, technology, they're standing by the adoption of the project, as I've just mentioned, but 
marketing does help a project gain awareness, gain followers, gain a bigger community. And again, that will drive the price up in the longer term. So um, the team are relatively silent with no regular updates. And that's kind of concerning for some people out there, especially the community. So the community itself, they are true believers only because there's no marketing, because there's no hype, because the team aren't driving uh, a marketing a plan behind the scenes. There's no influencers pumping it. And that could be viewed as a good thing in many ways, but it can also be a weakness for the project because it might not get the support that it deserves. And because of its complexity, people will call it a scam or because they don't understand it, they will belittle it. And I've seen this already on some YouTube videos. I've seen people, um, you know, saying stupid stuff about it that's never going to be adopted, that it doesn't work, that other things are better, uh, that, um, you know, it's a cash grab, all this nonsense. And of course, because it's uh, linked to the Ethereum price, then if Ethereum crashes, Trubit protocol may crash as well. It's not just going to stand or fall on its own merits alone. And the other thing is it's not yet on any major exchanges. Now, uh, I'm hoping and I'm pretty confident that in the future it will be adopted and it will hit some of the major exchanges. But at the moment, it's not. It's only available in Uniswap and some of the minor exchanges. Okay, so summary. So we've been through quite a lot. Um, for me, I'm already invested in Truebit. It's one of my biggest bags at the moment. The reason is long-term hold for me. And if you believe in Ethereum, it's a solid investment. If you believe in Ethereum, then anything that helps Ethereum grow and become the world's supercomputer we know it's meant to be, well, it's going to be a good investment as well. The other thing that I noticed about this project is it has parallels to Chainlink when it launched. Now, there's a strong, hardcore community behind this project already. People that are volunteering, as I say, they've not paid any influencers or marketers, which is a great thing because they don't deserve your money, guys. And they'll just dump on you. Uh, dump on you. They get the IDO pre-sales. They get the private sales. And then they say this thing's the next uh, uh, greatest project in sliced bread. Oh, it uh, solves this pain point. Absolute tosh and nonsense. They're dumping on you. Don't believe them. That's all I can say. Now, they, they shit on you and they'll shit on this project because they can't hype this project. They're not getting paid to hype this project. They don't understand it. And quite simply, this project, if it does what it says on the tin, which I'm confident it does, then it's a game changer as far as the um, uh, scalability of blockchain is concerned. And that is the main thing we're talking about here. Really, really important advancement. And as I mentioned, it could be the solution to make Ethereum the world's supercomputer that we know it's capable of being. So in my opinion, to summarize, this must form part of a portfolio, balanced portfolio, uh, under any circumstances. And right now, it's still under a dollar. I mean, you know, uh, with marketing, this thing would be five, seven, ten dollars already. I can guarantee you that. I think it's going to be a future top 50 project, maybe even top 20. And I'm confident the team will deliver. If you know who they are, you've listened to the video already and you're still not invested in it. Well, what else can I say to convince you? So this is not financial advice, by the way. This is just for entertainment purposes only. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and I'll be back in a few days with another video. Don't know what I'm going to do yet. Actually, I do know what I'm going to do, but I'm not letting you know. It'll be a surprise. Okay, thanks for joining me. I'm Audi. Peace.